Now, very quickly, Aristotle. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Aristotle divides friendship into three kinds. Very practical, very useful. He calls them and the lowest, middle, and the highest. He calls them friendship of pleasure, first kind. Oh, I'm bored, I'm alone, I'm feeling lonely. Let's go out with a friend, okay? As the new, I'm still figuring out. American uh, turns of phrases can be profound but puzzling to me. Uh, like, why do people say, let's hang out? Like, you know, in, in India we used to say about uh, washed clothes, that we have to hang them out, right? <laughs> but uh, I learned here that you hang out. <laughs> nothing, nothing big, no loyalty, nothing. I mean, tomorrow you can campaign against him. You know, Trump can say to Biden, let's hang out, right? It's pleasure for some time. Okay, I'm bored with all my fans, and let me go hang out with my detractors. Okay, somebody does. This is friendship of pleasure, temporary. Okay, and there is a law of diminishing pleasure with friendships, you know, like if I meet with everybody. That's why I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm happy that I'm leaving tomorrow because if I, you know, stayed on and on, that gradually my tea time with Maharaj will reduce a little bit, you know, because he'll be busy. Yeah. So it's good, you know, as long as. So it's like, diminish, yeah, it can, but eventually everything, everything goes. Mahabharat, Mahabharat and Vivekananda are equally caustic and pessimistic about this. Mahabharat one of the most beautiful but tragic lines in the Mahabharata is that you know how twice this is repeated in the Mahabharata in the beginning and in Shantipura that human friendships are like in a vast ocean two planks of wood coming from God knows where they come together and for some time they float side by side, as if they're inseparable, and then they dive out. And it is used in the most stark, non-sweet, non-poetic words. Yatha kashtam cha kashtam cha samayete maho dadau sametya cha vyapete tadvad bhuta samagama. They get together. Human togetherness is like that. There is no permanence. Pleasure, friendship of pleasure. Second, the most important, friendship of utility. Okay, friendship of utility. Okay, and you know, savvy, bright youngsters, both in India and Americanized India and America, they're they're all doing that nowadays. Okay, choose your friend carefully. Who can be of use? Right, utility. There's a very very funny story about this. The Nobel laureate. Amartya Sen, an economist, he had just, he was at that time master of Trinity College, Cambridge. Master means the chancellor, something like the president of the college. It's called master. But he had gone out, he is not a British citizen, he still has an Indian passport. So he had gone out to, go, where is the place where Nobel Prize is given? Uh, the city, um, you know, wherever Nobel Prize is given. Yeah, Sweden. Sweden, yes. Uh, Rinda, do you remember? Uh, <laughs> so, in any case, so he had gone out, flown out, to receive the prize. As he comes back in Heathrow Airport, nobody knows him. So there's the Indian passport. So what took you out? Well, you know, I got the prize and so on. So, I, so what is your address in England? So he says, Master's Lodge, Trinity College, Cambridge. Truth, fact. Without looking up, the immigration officer says, oh, you've got friends in good places. <laughs> and Amartya Sen starts a book, Identity and Violence, by relating this and commenting, since then, I have been wondering, am I my own friend? Because that's he himself. The master, right? Atma hi atmano bandhu. So, in any case, so that's the friendship of utility. 
third, Aristotle prizes his, uh, rates it very highly. It's called friendship of virtue. Like we call satsang, you know, company of good people. If you keep company with pure people, good people, holy people, and intelligent people, if you keep company with great musicians, then a little bit of music will rub off. And other, if you keep with a moral person, truthful, honest person, then hopefully you will be virtuous. Sometimes Aristotle means by it that you might have complementary virtues. You may be very unpunctual, but extremely kind and generous. Another person may be a little bit miserly and mean, but very punctual. You may learn punctuality from one virtue from him, and he may learn this, and together you'll become better. This is friendship of vir virtue. Well, God himself or Brahman or reality, whatever, has, you know, made that a blind alley. Why? Because in the beginning, he didn't like to be alone. He wanted a second one. Yes, and he suffered. He said, And then he was, then all this play started of making another out of. And I find myself abominable. Vivekananda himself says, If I become the devil himself, how do I, would I know my value? When my best friend, really abandons me on a very good, legitimate moral ground. You have proved yourself to be nefarious. You have done me injustice. You are of no use to me. You are not pleasure. You are not a friendship, friend of pleasure. You are not a friend of utility. And you are definitely not a friend of virtue. You are not a friend. I am leaving. What do you feel? You feel you are valueless. You feel you are nothing. You are worse than the dust. And that's what the abandoning friend, friend wants you to feel. But if they don't abandon you, if they say, you do whatever you, I am never going to leave you. Vivekananda says, that's not a joke. That's unconditional love. And it's not the loved ego or the loving other who is the real self and the friend but it's their love in between them that love relationship that's the atma aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta. i am neither the lover nor the loved i am love